He was a quiet man. He went about his business. He worked hard and he knew his trade. Everyone knew him as the carpenter. Just another carpenter. He worshipped God and he kept the commandments. He did everything he was supposed to do. He was looking forward to his wedding to Mary. The time when they could finally come together and be man and wife. He kept himself for her. There was no one else. He trusted her to do the same. I mean, what kind of marriage would it be if they couldn't trust each other? Mary had been away for three months. She was visiting her cousin Elizabeth, who incredibly was having a baby after so many years of being childless. Joseph was happy for old Zechariah and Elizabeth. They'd waited so long for this that their trust in God was rewarded. <laughs> Joseph hoped that he and Mary wouldn't have to wait so long for their children. <laughs> Joseph didn't mind Mary's absence too much. He longed to see her face again, of course. But he had things to do to prepare for this wedding. He spent his time between working in his carpentry business and building the house that they would share together, where they would, God willing, have beautiful children together and watch them grow. And he would teach them, oh, so many things. Joseph dreamed with his firstborn son, the one that would follow him into the business, the one that he would teach, the one who would, he would look into his eyes and see himself. Ah. Oh. Thought about how he'd take the child by the hand as he learned to walk. How he'd teach him to read the scriptures and to know the God that Joseph himself worshipped. Yeah, he would see himself reflected in the child's eyes and he would take pride in every small achievement of that child. Mm. He'd teach his firstborn about different kinds of woods. Hardwoods, softwoods, woods from different kinds of trees. He'd teach him how to prepare it, how to measure it, how to saw and plane it into the right sizes, sand off the rough edges, make strong joints that would hold together, make strong beams that would stop a building from falling down. That was what he knew. That was Joseph's trade. Joseph hoped that God would bless him and Mary with many children. He would love and cherish his wife, his sons and his daughters, and he would always do his best for them. He wasn't a wealthy man, but he made sure they always had food on the table and sandals on their feet. So Joseph dreamed about the life that they would have together and smiled to himself, giving thanks to God daily for the young girl he would make his life with and looking forward to the day that she would return from her cousin Elizabeth. And then came the bombshell. Joseph couldn't get his head around it. He trusted her! He trusted her! But there she was, holding her belly, proudly saying that she was pregnant and something about an angel he couldn't work out what. All he could hear was this word, pregnant. Whatever she was saying, it sounded like nonsense to his ears. She was pregnant. And it wasn't his. He kept himself for her. It wasn't his. She was supposed to be his. Mary, his Mary. She was supposed to wait until the wedding. She was supposed to be faithful to him, to Joseph. How could he take on another man's child? The dream of Joseph, as he, of his firstborn son, the one that he would take by the hand and teach so many things, just crumbled before his eyes. How? Could Mary humiliate him like this? How could she deprive him of his dream? So many things going round in Joseph's head. He should report her to the rabbi. I mean, that's what the law says. 
And Joseph's a law-abiding man. He's a righteous man. He should report her to the rabbi. I mean, this community is meant to be pure. He couldn't be seen to be condoning her behaviour. But the community would deal with her harshly. She, she could even be put to death. Joseph didn't want to be responsible for that. For all his hurt, for all his sense of betrayal, he cared about Mary. But he couldn't just go ahead and marry her as things stood. What would people say? Maybe they'd blame him, maybe they'd think that he couldn't wait. They'd be whispering about them. Oh. And how could he ever trust her again? If she'd done it once, she can do it again. There is one other option that occurs to Joseph. He could have a quiet word with her family. The law of Moses said that he can put an end to this arrangement, make a divorce, and it could all be done quietly. And her family could deal with it as best they could. <sighs> yeah, that would be the kindest thing for Joseph to do. It broke his heart, but he couldn't see any other way. Yes, that was decided. Joseph would see her tomorrow and break it to her as gently as he could. Joseph prayed that God would bless his decision and make it right somehow. He trusted God. God would make it right somehow. He felt sure that this was the right thing to do. Just to divorce Mary. He would find another girl eventually. He was sure. Wouldn't be the same, but still God would make it right. Joseph was a quiet man. But he listened. He listened to God. And when an angel appeared to him in a dream, it, with an instruction, he obeyed. Don't be afraid to do the hard thing, said the angel. Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. The angel confirmed Mary's story, incredible as it was. This child wasn't another man's. It was true Mary hadn't been with another man, but it was true that there had been an angel that spoke to her and said that the child was Emmanuel. God had done this. God had done this. The child would be Emmanuel, God with us. God made human by being born to a woman. Joseph didn't understand. He didn't know how this could be possible, but he trusted God. And Joseph was being asked to take on a big responsibility, to bring up this child and love him as his own, to be a father to Jesus without actually fathering him. In a way, it was like bringing up another man's child. A big ask. Joseph knew this child wouldn't be his own flesh and blood, but he trusted God. He put aside his own feelings about the matter. There would be whisperings and pointing fingers, to be sure, throughout that child's childhood. People wouldn't understand. They were criticising him for marrying Mary. Joseph was prepared to endure all that for the sake of his obedience to God, for the sake of his faith in God and in Mary, the Chosen One. God chose the right man for the job of being an earthly father to his beloved son, the saviour of the world. Joseph, the quiet man, a man of inner strength, who responded positively to devastating news. News of betrayal, news of shattered dreams, but he responded positively. A merciful man who made a decision that would protect Mary while maintaining his integrity. 
a humble man who changed his mind in obedience to God's prompting, even though it seemed to go against all common sense to go ahead and marry Mary. A man of courage, who did the difficult thing and legally adopted Jesus, who gave him a name, a home and a trade, a trade that Jesus followed until the time he took up the work of his Heavenly Father and brought the whole world salvation. A man who you remember saved his wife and children from mortal danger, fleeing to Egypt to escape King Herod's jealous rage. Again, listening to God, listening to God's instructions, even though there was no evidence. God spoke, Joseph obeyed. An ordinary man, doing ordinary things to the best of his ability for an extraordinary child, the hope of all the nations. A man who taught the child Jesus right from wrong as he grew and tried things out. A man who marvelled as the child grew to be even wiser than himself. How could it be? This was Joseph, the quiet man, the faithful man, the ordinary man. Jesus was a man of actions, not words. In all of scripture, we never hear him speak. We don't know what he might have said. You know, when we heard the stories of Zechariah and Elizabeth and Mary, it was full of all the things that they said. But Joseph's like the forgotten man. He never even appears very much in the Bible. But he's not an extra in the drama of the nativity, he has a crucial role. Because of Joseph's faithful actions, God's purposes unfolded. 30 years after that miracle birth, Jesus preached the year of the, of the Lord's favour and good news to the poor, announced that he was the one that the Spirit of God was upon. He brought miracles of healing in the power of God sight to the blind, recovery of sight, freedom to the captives and to the oppressed because of Joseph's faithful actions, bringing up the child to maturity. Because of Joseph's faithful actions, Jesus was able to teach the people what God the Father is like, what it means to have a loving father, how he helped to, the people to see that God is a father, just like the father that he had known on earth. A father who loves and cares, provides and protects, and who never gives up. A father who bears shame on behalf of his child. In obedience to the angel, Joseph gave his, his child the name Jesus because he would save the people from their sins. We know that Jesus died to bring forgiveness of sins and rose from the dead to bring relief for humanity captive to the power of sin and death. But you know, Joseph never lived to see that happen. By the time Jesus died and rose again, Joseph was no longer in the picture. We don't know when he died. But like Moses, Joseph never entered into the promised land. His time on earth came to an end before Jesus even completed his ministry. He never saw Jesus go to the cross. He never heard the good news that Jesus was risen from the dead and had overcome sin and death. He didn't know any of that in all his time of being Jesus' father on earth. He never saw the completion of God's purposes, but Joseph trusted that all would be well. Perhaps, you know, he was comforted by his namesake from the Old Testament. Joseph of that many coloured coat. You remember how that Joseph had suffered humiliation, how he'd been sold as a slave, how he'd been unjustly accused of the shameful act of molesting his master's wife. That Joseph endured shame 
but he came through. He trusted God. He did what he could do to the best of his ability, interpreting dreams and enabling Egypt to survive and to thrive even during famine. And he ended up being able to say that God meant all this for good when he'd been reunited with his brothers. Joseph never saw the fruits of what he did. He lived an ordinary life, being faithful, bringing up his child to the best of his ability, doing his job and looking after his family. Do you know, we do what we do from day to day. And like Joseph, we may never see the fruits of the things we do in obedience to God's leading. We just do our best as Joseph did. We respond to things as best we can, listening for God's leading and being willing to change our minds if God leads us differently from that common sense path that we decided upon. When I was thinking about faithfulness of God's people in the same way that Joseph uh, was faithful, I was thinking about St Luke's Church and how we are all here, well we're not here, but we are all the gathered people, not gathered, but there's over a hundred of us. And I was thinking about the story that I, I heard about how St. Luke's nearly closed many years ago. And how there was only a handful of faithful and mainly elderly people who were faced with a difficult decision. And how they decided that that church wouldn't close, that they would find different ways of being church, even though it meant moving out of their building and being homeless. Spending time in one place, spending time in another place after, after that change. They trusted that God would do something new, but they could never have dreamed mm -hmm. that we would have this church building that we share with St Luke's School. They've all died now. They could never have known that that handful of people would have turned into over a hundred church members from all sorts of different backgrounds, and now being joined online by people from wherever. <laughs> they never knew, they died before that happened, but we give thanks for their obedience and their vision, for the hardships that they faced, not doing the common sense thing, but doing the thing that they felt that God was telling them to do. And now, our church's future is assured under our curate in charge Amy and there are big plans by the diocese where we're called to reach out and do something new once again in loving service in an area that is rapidly changing. God is faithful. Amen. God is faithful. We may not know what lies ahead. Times right now are hard. Many of you are going through hardships. We know that our community is going through hardships. God asks us to simply trust him, as Joseph did. One of my favourite verses in the Bible is this, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. God is faithful. He's our rock in times of trouble. He lifts us up when we fall. His presence never leaves us. He does what humanly seems impossible. All God asks is for us to quietly get on with whatever task he calls us to do, and he will do the rest. Who knows what difference our faithfulness will make to the world around us? We may see it, like Joseph we may not, but who knows what God will do through our faithfulness to our calling. Amen. Amen. Amen.